this video is about all of the fragrances that I have had on what I call my vintage shelf. We're actually going to go through 45 fragrances today that I have had up on the highest. So shelf. somewhere in the beginning of me starting this channel back in December of 2020 at the height of COVID, I became interested in sniffing every fragrance I could get my hands on. And I also became interested in reacquainting myself with some fragrances from the past. Within a few months of launching my channel, I did something called an 80s week that is absolutely cringeworthy where <laughs> I sing songs from the 80s at the top of the video, share with you fragrances that I wore during the 80s, and tell you some memories from that time period. It seemed like a great fun concept at the time. Looking back, I'm like mortified that those videos are out there. You're totally welcome to go look at those, but I know a number of you may really, really cringe when you see those, but they're out there and they are what they are, and I'm not taking them down because I'm too old to like be embarrassed, but they are really quite cringy. <laughs> so around that time, I also started to recollect fragrances of my past. I've had some bottles for a long time, but there are other bottles that I went through as a middle school student, a high schooler, a college student, early in my 20s when I was a teacher in the late 90s, early 2000s. So for the purposes of this video, we're gonna define the word vintage as being 20 years or older. You may have a different definition. That's what we're working with today. I didn't pull every single fragrance in my collection that has a history of being 20 years or older, but I pulled the ones that I consider to be nostalgic fragrances for one reason or another. And my goal is to pare this down by half. So 45 does not divide by two evenly. So we're just gonna say 22 or 23 fragrances remaining out of this. And the rest will go up on my Mercari, which is linked below. I hope these find a happy new home. And you may be wondering, why do I wanna get rid of half of that shelf? They're becoming way too crowded up there. And the fact of the matter is that they're really just there for reference, for memory's sake. So I wanna keep the ones that bring me the most joy in terms of memory, the ones that might, I might actually wear again sometime. And I'm gonna start off with one that I already know is staying and that is the beautiful Amrige by Givenchy. This is in my top 10 for life. It's going nowhere, hubby loves this. I love this, great memory associations with this. A very strong fragrance when it was first released. I'm on bottle, I don't know, three. This is a heavy white and yellow floral bomb of a fragrance. It's got some woody notes. It gives off an ambery feel, even though you don't see an amber accord in the fragrance. I kind of get that heavy type of feeling from this fragrance like you would from an amber one. There's also some fruity notes. I call this like a kitchen sink fragrance because it's got so much going on. Highly feminine, really beautiful, staying. And I'm gonna put the ones that are staying on the shelf behind me so we kind of keep track visually of which ones are staying in my house. Next we go to good old light blue. And I will say I've had this bottle for a very, very long time. And I think that the top notes have gone off. That can happen if you have a fragrance for a very long time. This has moved from house to house. I had this when I wasn't really storing my fragrances properly. I don't know, 10 years ago. But um, I've used a lot of this. And when I bought this, it was already a used bottle. I bought this off of eBay. So I haven't checked the batch code, but chances are that this fragrance is original, <laughs> maybe from the early 2000s. I don't know. And I actually would like to upgrade to the intense version of this. So I think I'll get a little intense and let this bottle go. Maybe use this as an air freshener. Everybody knows what this fragrance smells like. It is citrus. It's fresh. It has a little bit of woodiness to it. This was the fragrance back in the day. Like if you wore this, people knew what you were wearing. And it was just this iconic, really fabulous fragrance that was a little bit edgy for its day. It's apple and lemon at the top that give it a really sort of fresh, appealing thing. And it's that DNA that everybody knows. So this one is leaving, although I'm going to get the intense version. <laughs> Next we go to From Guerlain, Vol de Nuit, which is a really old fragrance. This particular bottle is not old, but there is a lot of history behind this fragrance from the beginning of the 20th century. And it's the flight of night and it celebrates flights. Okay, so this is in the B bottle. It's had different kinds of bottles. This is the Eau de Toilette Concentration. This fragrance is lovely. I don't wear it often. I've worn it maybe a handful of times. I do enjoy sniffing it. I find it to be green, iris. It's like that cold purple iris slash violet type of feel with green notes and a little bit of woodiness. And it is very pleasant, very structured, very cool. Because of the name Flight of Night, it does make me think of an almost midnight black night and the coolness of the air, maybe from a hot day as the 
the heat of the day sort of settles down and the coolness of nighttime settles in over the land. It's a really interesting fragrance. I love the history of this. I'm torn because of that history. And so I'm going to put this aside and we'll decide at the end. But the, the fact of the matter is that this is one that I wouldn't wear often at all, although I really, really appreciate the scent profile and there is something appealing about it. One that I already know I'm going to let go of because I never ever reach for it is Arpege. And this is the Eau de Parfum. This, uh, so very iconic bottle here with the mother and child symbol on it. This fragrance is aldehydic, it is woody, it has white and yellow florals. And there's a lot of promise for this fragrance when you look at the notes. However, I have to say that for me, this is a very dated smell in a way that I don't know that I feel comfortable wearing. It's one that I can appreciate facets of it, but when I put it on, it just doesn't feel like a me fragrance. I do enjoy the bottle. I think it's really pretty and classy, but this one is going to go bye-bye. Goodness, this next fragrance nearly makes me cry when I sniff it because it has such great memories of the past. This is one that was featured in my 80s week of videos. Oh my God, super duper cringy. Have I mentioned that yet? This is from, I think it's Dana or Dana. I don't really care about the name of the house because I always just knew it as Chantilly. Did you wear Chantilly back in the day? When I tell you that I went through several bottles of this in middle school, y'all, I would choke folks out. I was in a marching band and we would go into school early at 7 a.m. I lived in the Bronx and we would catch the bus over to school and we would march in the gym in our marching band and I would just douse myself in this. I was a majorette and then I was a drum major <laughs> and just knew I was the boss lady with this thing on. Goodness, it's just super powerful citrus and vanilla and woody notes and some floral notes together. It is a really strong, powerful fragrance, very nostalgic, maybe smells a little cheap now to my nose, but at the time you couldn't tell me anything. You could tell me nothing. I just knew I was, I was all of that in a bag of chips, okay, wearing this fragrance. It has, even though it's mainly citrus and vanilla, it has this really sort of like romantic vibe for me. I don't know if it's just because I remember the memories of this at a time when I was like really feeling myself. I thought, thought I was super cute. You know, I was just beginning to wear makeup and do my hair. I had a feathered 80s look on my hair. Y'all, that was a hot mess. Anyway, I can't get rid of this. This is truly and purely happiness in a bottle in terms of the memory that uh, the memories that it brings up for me. So this is staying. A fragrance that I didn't wear when I was younger, but definitely has a long history and I remember it on others, the original of it anyway. It was created in 1921, Emerald by Cody. So this is one of those fragrances that people really complain about being reformulated. Oh, it's a shadow of its former self. You know, it's nothing like it was, blah, blah, blah. You know, perseverating over the reformulation thing. But this doesn't smell like, you know, what I remember, the memory that I have of it. But what it is now is almost like a transparent ambery fragrance. Like when I think about amber fragrances, a lot of them tend to be heavy and sticky and resinous. This one is a much lighter uh, type of amber, almost like a summer amber. It's spicy and it has a lot of citrus notes in it. It's a happy fragrance. I don't think that I would pull for this or wear this. It's not my style or something that I really seek to wear. So I'm going to let this one go, but it was sure fun to have it and sniff it and play with it while I had it. The next bottle, honestly, I purchased it because I really liked the bottle and I knew it had a long history. And I know that people around me wore it when I was younger. This is Habanita Molinard Eau de Parfum. So this is not the original bottle, the original flacon, but it's interesting and it, it's actually like a 3D relief. So in that sense, it's a super cool bottle. Mostly a powdery fragrance with a little bit of spices, some vanilla. Uh, this is a fragrance that when you wear it long enough, it has a tiny touch, <laughs> a tiny touch of BO on you. I think that it comes from the nutmeg in the fragrance. Nutmeg can do that on me sometimes. It can be great. And other times uh, nutmeg in a fragrance can smell a little bit like what coriander does or cumin or those kinds of spices that can just get a little a little bioish. It's, it's all I can say and it's very very slight otherwise this is a lovely powdery vanillic fragrance and it's woody also this will be on Mercari and I hope that it sells well because it's a great bottle and man you've hung around you have hung around through declutter after declutter after declutter so neat fragrance but I probably wouldn't reach for it I'll tell you sniffing this I would likely reach for something like Initio Absolute Aphrodisiac if I'm in the mood for something like this it's along those same lines except this is heavier on the powder but it's got that same sort of slightly animalic vibe from whatever that little bo thing <laughs> that it has going on but you'll go to a happy new home 
Thank you for hanging out with me so long. You already know that my Lo de Issei from Issei Miyake is staying in my collection. This is an older bottle and I'm nursing it because I don't want it to go away. One of the most beautiful floral aquatic smells. Oh my gosh, it is just so, so good. And it's going nowhere. It's sexy. I love it. And it's like a powerhouse of a fragrance. A little bit dated, but I still love it. This one stays for sure. One fragrance I'm keeping purely for nostalgic reasons and because I have an emotional attachment to it because I don't really think I can wear this fragrance these days. It's pretty scandalous. It is Agent Provocateur. This one came out, I think, right in 2000 or 2001. My sister, older sister, gave this to me. I remember that we were in London for a Christmas trip visiting her. She lived there at the time. And she gifted my other sister, my mom, and me with this fragrance. And at the time, I thought it was amazing. Now, smelling it again, the opening is absolute skank, like skanky skank. It's this like really strong, pungent, woody rose and other like bodily scents or whatever, all in one. The opening is super skanky. That's it. And then it dries down into this woody rose that's a lot more pleasant and acceptable. <laughs> so I'm unlikely to wear this, but I do just love the bottle, the egg-shaped bottle, and great memory of hanging out in London with my family. All right, leave me a capital letter O in the comments if you wore Obsession <laughs> back in the day when this first came out. This newer bottle, I really freaking hate. I don't like the shape of it. In fact, speaking of London, it reminds me of that egg-shaped building in the landscape, the, the, the landscape, the cityscape of London, which I think is a beautiful building, but this just falls short and just seems so cheap with the plastic cap. Can you tell I haven't worn this a lot? This is a very ambery, spicy fragrance, a lot of vanilla. I would reach for other fragrances that give me that same vibe, for example, material from Amouage does that. Believe it or not, Dior Addict gives me the same feeling that I would want to go for with this. So not that they're the same, but the same kind of vibe. I feel like this falls so short of what I remember the original to be in terms of it being pungent and thick, this really sort of thick, spicy, deep, golden amber type of fragrance. I had the original, excuse me, my mom, I didn't have it. My mother had the original in the boat shape when it came out they had the dabber top that you twist it off and man did that smell good and man did i wear it to death unfortunately this just doesn't live up to that i do think it has some of those same aspects but it's not the same fragrance and it's so far off for me that i have to say goodbye to obsession 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 oh no that's eternity eternity <laughs> Next up, I have from Estee Lauder Beyond Paradise. This is the new bottle. If you remember it from back in the day, it had like almost this teardrop with this rainbow, maybe sunsetty kind of striped, striated color situation happening. And I love that bottle. This fragrance is unique. Now that I'm sniffing it again, and I haven't worn this probably in a year and a half, maybe even two years, which is crazy because it's a a really unique, interesting scent. It's hyacinth and honeysuckle mostly at the top, which make this a really unique scent. In terms of being a floral, it almost smells like grape candy. Grape candy and this brightness, this very bright banana-y floral with grape candy together at the top. Really unique scent. I'm hesitant to let this go because it is so different than other fragrances that I have. However, I don't ever reach for it. So I'm going to put it to the side and we're going to come back to a decision about this in a little bit here. It's one that I could see using as um, an air freshener. Not that I'm saying it smells like an air freshener, but the scent is very, very appealing. I would even love this in like an oil form. Man, that's really, really quite nice. And it smells similar to the original. I, I feel like the original was a little deeper, although I think Estee Lauder claims that this was not reformulated. Sometimes we think things are reformulated when they're actually not. Friends, many times, hear me because people don't want to believe this. It's not that it was reformulated. It's that our sense of smell changed. We're older. <laughs> As you get older, you have less ability to smell. You're Ability to smell diminishes over time. So let's face that. I'm nearly 50. My sense of smell is going to be very different than it was at 20 years old. And so sometimes people will say, oh, they just decimated it. They watered it down. They this, they that. No, it's that your sense of smell. My sense of smell is very watered down. And in other cases, like obsession, there was a really sad reformulation. So let me put this to the side. It's close enough to the original to give me that same vibe. Really unique fragrance, really unique. Ooh, a fragrance that smells dated, but there's no denying it has some beauty to it is Lancome Maginoir. 
wow, this is very animalic, <laughs> in my opinion, in the way that those powerhouse fragrances of yesteryear were. Very heavy on the oak moss, very green. It's got, like I said, some animalic notes. There's some aromatic notes. It is strong. It's a little bit dirty in an in, in alluring way. However, it is a dated fragrance. And I have to be honest and say it's not one that I would probably reach for. I've kept it for nostalgia's sake. I've kept it because I find it intriguing, even though I don't think I would actually wear it. And I think it would probably be better suited in another home. So we're going to say goodbye to Maji Noir. A Godspeed. Okay, y'all. How about Estee Lauder's Knowing? <sighs> I had an original formulation of this back when and went through some of it and then got tired of it and ended up selling it on eBay. That was, was back when eBay was really hot. I still shop on eBay to this day and find really great vintage fragrances and bags and shoes and things like that on there. Man, this fragrance is so woody, so deeply patchouli, spicy, has that wet dirt thing happening. I don't know. I, I wouldn't wear this fragrance anymore. I've worn it a few times, but I think I've sort of outgrown that like oak mossy, patchouli, woody thing. I have some fragrances like that in my collection that I'm drawn to, but I don't know that I would reach for this over those. And it's really potent and strong and very dated as a fragrance. And so as much as I like the bottle, the kitschy bottle here and the memories, I think I'm going to let this one go too. Uh, one that I recently reacquired because I had it back in the day and that is absolutely staying and I find to be a pretty stunning fragrance is La Monde de Beau. First of all, I like this bottle. It has the Kenzo right here with the floral thing. I've been looking for this bottle for forever and ever. I had a little mini of it and remember what it looked like as a mini. It was super duper cute. Anyway, the distinctive thing about this fragrance is that it has a prominent basil note along with other citruses and florals and is really fresh, uplifting, vibrant, nostalgic when you first spray it on. And it settles down nicely into this uh, citrusy floral fragrance. Great all year round, but definitely in late spring into summer into early fall. And I've worn this a few times since I repurchased this spring and just adore it. It is so stinking cute as a bottle and a very unique fragrance that I'd love to just keep in my collection for a while. So I was really happy to find this on FragranceNet, for those of you that are curious. I don't know if it's still out there when I filmed this, but check FragranceNet first for this, La Monde Beau. Another fragrance from the early 2000s that I have to keep, I have really great memories with this and I still enjoy the scent. It's Michael by Michael Kors. Michael Kors has been out here kicking around for a long time, giving us fashion, clothing, fragrance, all of his opinions on the runway show, Project Runway. That was Michael Kors, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. This is a heavy tuberose musk bomb of a fragrance. This is the original formulation. I do have the new formulation also. In fact, I probably need to decant this bottle, the original, into another bottle. If anyone has tried to remove the caps from these and you have advice on how to do that safely, let me know because the major problem with this is the sprayer on the old and newer bottles gets defunct really quick and then you have fragrance either dribbling out of the atomizer or down the sides, which is a waste and a pain and just all around annoying. But anyway, beautiful fragrance, lots of great memories of my early teaching days and feeling like this was one of those powerhouse fragrances that overwhelmed me at the time. And as I grew older, I became to really appreciate A it. very polarizing fragrance from back in the late 80s, early 90s is Elizabeth Arden Red Door. This is, I believe, a reformulated version. Certainly many people have complained about the reformulation of this. This fragrance was a bomb of a fragrance back in the day. Did you wear this? If so, type in the comments RD, RD, if you were a Red Door stan, <laughs> or if you were accosted by Red Door back in the day, put RD bomb in the comments. This is a sweet floral fragrance featuring the note of carnation, which can be really strong. You'll hear about carnation in an upcoming fragrance. I remember this fragrance being like a suffocating fragrance. If people wore too much of it in a room, Heck, if they more, wore more than like a couple of sprays, it was just super projecting all over the place. It was like, do you remember that movie, The Fog, where the fog was coming through the town and came and engulfed everyone? This was like the fog <laughs> back in the day. I had a roommate who wore this once upon a time and it was just too much to bear. And so I'm not into this, I have to say. It's an interesting fragrance to smell just for nostalgia's sake, but I'm not into it enough to keep it. So I'm going to pass this one, one along. One fragrance that I really don't reach for and I probably should let go, but I've got so many memories with it. She's driving me out of my mind. Poison. 
poison, poison, plum and tuberose. Those are the two big players. You get some woody notes, a little bit of amber. It's an interesting fragrance. And so people have complained about this reformulation too. I don't even know what batch I have. This is an eau de toilette. But I remember wearing this and like it being super strong and me thinking that I was mega sexy, like in my early teenage years wearing poison. <laughs> so for nostalgia's sake, I'm going to put it up here on the keep shelf even though it's unlikely that I would reach for it. But let's let's keep it up I'm here for now. I'm tempted to keep the next fragrance because I love the bottle that it comes in. This is Bijan Woman. This came out in the 80s. It's honey and floral notes and amber, deep vanilla. It's sweet. It develops really nicely on the skin. I think it's kind of one of those sort of underrated floral sweet fragrances from back in the day. That's really wearable. Today. It gets sweeter and sweeter the longer that it wears, but definitely I would say it's floral forward. And what a cool, interesting bottle for its day. I don't see myself reaching for this often, to be fair and honest, with the other fragrances that I have. And so I'm torn because I do like the bottle and I like looking at it on my shelf. The fact of the matter is I probably would not reach for this often, although I would recommend it to people who are in the market for a honey floral fragrance that has an amber accord and is sweet and very very wearable, very pretty. So I'm going to put it in the no pile for now. I'm going to put Bijan's sister, the nude version in the maybe pile. And we're going to come back to this. I do like this fragrance. It's a very cool yet warm fragrance. It's got iris and violet and there's a white chocolate note. There's musk and there's soapiness. And it is just a really pleasant, elegant, clean, yet warm fragrance. I like it. I like it. I'm going to keep it in the maybe pile. It's not one that I would reach for a whole lot, but I think it's one that I would definitely still enjoy reaching for. I'm lucky enough to have an original formulation of Calyx. This is the prescriptives version, not the Clinique version, which is the new one. So I only have a little bit of juice left and I'm really nursing it because I love this thing. I love the bottle. I love the way that the name is just up there very discreetly in the corner. This was like a whole vibe back in the day. This was late 80s, early 90s, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember exactly when it came out. I have a whole dedicated video on this little beauty here. A lot of people seem to think that this is fruity. I think it has some melon notes, maybe pineapple and cantaloupe and something else. But for me, I get an intensely green, like a concentrated green fragrance that uh, I used to have a friend that wore this. And when she put it on and she came into the space, it was like, oh, wow, she smells amazing. And she happened to have a little bit of money. So I associated the wealth that she had with this fragrance, which is hilarious. So when we talk about a fragrance smelling rich, here you go. This I love. I can't get rid of this. I'm so glad to have this little original bit here that I ended up getting off of eBay. And it's saying a fragrance that I purchased out of curiosity. And I don't even remember how to say it. Jay or Jai or Hai Ose. That is the name of the perfume house. This is a very old fashioned to me fragrance. Another one of these mossy, ambery, patchouli types of fragrances that remind you of what your aunties wore back in the day. It is very nice. I wore it a number of times. And it's one that if you're into that sort of old school vintagey uh, smelling fragrance that reminds you of your mature, the mature matrons in your family, you may be interested in this. I have to be honest and say, I don't think about this fragrance because I don't have a whole lot of like memory association with it uh, like I do with some of these others. So this is one I can definitely let go of. A fragrance I'm definitely <laughs> letting go of. I wore this a few times. No one in my house likes it. And I have to be honest and say, I really, really hate the bottle of Mackie or Bob Mackie. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's a floral fruity fragrance. It's a Lang Lang and tuberose and peach at the top. And that's mostly what you get. It's pretty long lasting. I had the nerve to have the lotion of this. Also, I bought it in a set and I bought it really inexpensive. Like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a nice floral and it's long lasting. I just never reach for this and folks here in my house don't care for this. So I do need to let this go, but it's been fun hanging out with you. This has been a fun one. I really had absolutely zero business purchasing the next fragrance. It was so inexpensive. It was like $12. This is Tea Rose, y'all. I have so many memories of this fragrance from early high school. There were a number of friends of mine that wore this and I wore their bottles too. And... <laughs> Wow, it still smells like it did way back. Did I say early 80s? It was late 80s into early 90s when we were wearing this. This is a huge four ounce bottle, right? It's big. This is a big mamma jamma. Can you see that I haven't worn it? But it was so fun to purchase it 
and smell it and it smells just like I remember it. It's just not a fragrance that I would probably ever reach for today. It's a very, in my opinion, dated rose, absolutely true to form kind of a rose, but it also leans in the potpourri direction. So while it has that, you know, photorealistic rose, it also has those other potpourri-ish kinds of notes. And if you like this, hey, more power to you. I don't think this is one that I could wear today. Uh, without choking myself out and getting myself slightly nauseated. So I'm going to hope that this can find a new home. I may just give it away to someone and it would make a fantastic air freshener or use it as like you would for potpourri. Let's move on. Woo! How many of y'all remember Organza? <laughs> Powerhouse fragrance, uber floral, gardenia, tuberose, vanilla, amber. It's grown, it's sexy, it's really in your face. Super beast mode, in my opinion, heavily floral, very matronly. I don't read for this. I've worn this a few times. I find it super entertaining. I really do like the bottle. I uh, remember a lot of people wearing this. This is from Givenchy. The name is over here on the side. I love the way that it's there on the side of the bottle. It's a neat bottle and it's a neat scent. I have other tuberose gardenia fragrances that I gravitate toward. And so this is one that I kept really for the bottle and for nostalgia's sake because so many people wore it back in the day but i think i need to let organza go she's a beauty though she's a beauty so here's a fragrance i think i'm going to keep just solely because of the association that i have with it it's cabo shard i actually wore this more into my adult years like in my mid to late 20s or so even though it is a little bit old school of a fragrance and this is one of the older bottles in eau de toilette concentration it comes in a newer more sort of modern updated bottle and i associate this with leather and with money <laughs> it smells to me like freshly minted money bills nobody really carries a lot of money anymore most people work off of their credit cards and all of that but if you remember handling like paper money in your wallet especially if it was new and it was crisp the, imagine the scent of a leather wallet wafting together with the scent of freshly minted money. And that's kind of what this reminds me of. It has a lot of oak moss. And for that reason, it's not one that I would probably wear, although I do like to keep this for association reasons. So I'm going to put it up here on the shelf and we'll take a look later. And if one needs to go, this might be one that I would consider moving along. Here we go with a fragrance that I'm probably going to keep just for nostalgic reasons, even though it is slightly dated and it's unlikely that I would wear it often. Now it's one that I might reach for maybe like once a year or I would sniff for the memories that it brings to me. You know, it's definitely one that I would wear, although with so many fragrances, I wouldn't reach for this first, but it's still super nice. And that is Cabotin. This is uh, by the same house, Grey Parfum. So a lot of people will tell you that this is a fruity fragrance. It does have a lot of fruit notes in it. However, the fruits take a back seat to what I consider to be a really strong, almost sweet floral tuberose. And is there gardenia? I don't remember. Definitely a carnation note and a bunch of other florals. It's happy and it's fresh. I find this also to have a certain greenness to it, even though I don't think there are a lot of green notes or notes that you would consider green in this fragrance. It is super strong. I mean, it's like, oh, in your face, lasts forever. I have good memories of this and a funny memory of wearing this to an interview, an interview and like dousing myself. I remember the suit that I wore. It's a gray suit, pinstripe suit with a skirt that had a little like, flowy bottom to it and i smelled good but i smelled up the entire interview room with <laughs> with this and i got the job i got the job so i have happy associations with this broccoli top as we call it fragrance so i'm going to put this up here on the keep shelf the next three fragrances i've talked about in very recent videos so i won't go on and on about them i have to keep eternity eternity eternity, eternity from calvin klein really neat carnation heavy fragrance with other florals and green notes it's like super pungent super strong in your face and it's clean and it's happy and it brings back great memories so this is staying the same is true of a fragrance that i always have a ridiculously difficult time explaining it reminds me in some ways of this one in the way that it's very difficult to describe and that's calvin klein escape this is a fragrance that man i doused myself in it so so much I don't know how to describe this. It reminds me of the beach. It's floral. I bet there's some fruity notes in there. I haven't looked at the notes in a long time. 
but man, it's good. And, and it's still strong. It's still strong. People have complained about this being reformulated. I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but man, that smells amazing. And it reminds me of the potency of this one and the same sort of sexiness. Both of these are very, very sexy, very alluring fragrances, Escape from Calvin Klein. And then I'm keeping my white linen from Estee Lauder, y'all. This is a really good one. I mentioned this in a recent video too about uh, fragrances I think that holds up well in high heat that are not your usual suspects. Beautiful, all to hide bomb of a fragrance, like the cleanest of the clean, most structured, beautiful fragrances from Estee Lauder, a classic and it's staying. The next two fragrances I repurchased because they remind me of my mom. My mom wore them. She doesn't really wear fragrance anymore. She's getting up there in years and just has kind of lost interest in, in wearing all of these vintage fragrances, but I have so many great memories of the original versions that she had of these on her dresser and me as a little girl playing in them. And one of them was Oscar de la Renta. It wasn't in this bottle. This is a newer bottle. There was a dabber bottle that this came in. This is still quite lovely. It is mostly like a tuberose and sandalwood and spicy fragrance. It is vintage feeling, but it's still really nicely done. I don't know that I would reach for this often. And so I feel like I'm not being fair keeping it in the collection. I did just bring it back into my collection maybe like a year and a half ago because I was really curious to smell it again. It's nice. I don't know that I would reach for this. So I'm going to put it in the no pile for now. I'm on the fence about the next fragrance, which is part of the two that I purchased for nostalgic reasons. My mom had this too. This is Paloma Picasso. I always thought <laughs> this bottle looked like an egg, an over easy egg. This is a dark gothic fragrance in my opinion. It's mossy. It has another, another one of these fragrances with a prominent carnation note. Carnation was apparently one of the primary flowers of interest back in the day. It's woody. It has patchouli. It's spicy. It's really dark, almost brooding but alluring and interesting. I'm not sure that I'm ready to get rid of this. I'm going to put it in the maybe pile and we'll come back to it. It's very elegant, very elegant. Has all the little animals, y'all. So for those of you that don't like to see the little civet and the beaver and all of that <laughs> in the no profile, yeah, you want to stay away from this one. That doesn't bother me at all. But yeah, that's what that's what's going on with this fragrance. So a couple of years ago, I got super lucky and scored an original bottle of Estee Lauder Private Collection which I just adore. I can't imagine getting rid of this. This is one of the prized fragrances in my collection and especially among the vintage shelf because it's actually vintage. It's an original bottle. And there's something so special and tender about this fragrance that is very challenging for me to describe. It has a garden-like smell, like a melange of flowers. It has this sweetness that also has a little touch of what I would call like a hay-like texture and feeling to it mashed up with a soft sweetness and an earthy touch, like an earth after the rain touch. It's all sort of combined into this fragrance that is charming and a little bit mystical to me because it brings back really great memories of this from the past. And I just adore it. I adore it in ways I can't describe and I'm not willing to part with this and I don't use it often, not because it doesn't smell great, but because I don't want to use this up because it'll be hard to find again. So this is staying. Coming up are two fragrances that are famous for sort of breaking that gender thing in fragrance in the 90s. And I wore both of these to death in college. <laughs> the first one is CK1, CK1, which I'm going to tell you what, this is a really pleasant, simple, citrusy green fragrance that has a touch of musk. I will say this does lean slightly masculine, despite being one of the first unisex fragrances on the market. I believe that the commercial for these, if I remember correctly, featured androgyny as a theme, which was really interesting for the time period, gender bending, all of those things. I feel like I need to move this over to my white t-shirt shelf. This is an easy run errands kind of a fragrance. It doesn't have the greatest longevity. It's okay. You'll get about a half a day wear. I think the most important thing about this fragrance is that it's very close to the skin. So it's very inoffensive, great for hospital environments, office environments, those types of situations. Very easy going. Do I love this? No. Does it bring back great memories to look at the bottle? Yes. Uh, do I think I want to keep it? I'm going to say yes for now. But I really thought that I was unique and different when I wore CKB, <laughs> even though everyone was wearing this. And if I'm not mistaken, that one came out first, then this one came out and everybody went crazy. Lavender and bergamot and musk. This is another fantastic skin scent. I remember thinking this was the sexier of the two, very appealing to me. There's a little bit of sweetness in this as well as greenness. I think there's a grass note. 
It's interesting. Um, you know, is it unique for today? No. At the time, was this a unique fragrance? Absolutely. Is this one that I could wear every day? Probably. So I'm going to, if I keep these, these are going to end up on my white t-shirt shelf just to remind me to kind of spritz myself with these as I move through my routine. I hunted down this next bottle and just had to have it. <laughs> <laughs> got it and enjoyed it for about two days before I realized I don't think this is for me, but I've held onto it and held onto it because it is harder and harder to find. This is Eden from Cacharel. So, I mean, this is just such a hot mess of a fragrance. You know what this reminds me of? It gives me the same vibe of like synthetic jungle from Frederick Mall, which I recently tested. Ah, I don't even know how to describe this. This is a massive headache waiting to happen. I consider this like if you take I think the way I described it was taking all of the greenness that you can imagine in the world, in the planet, a little bit of plastic, and just smush that all together down into a very, very concentrated form of kryptonite. It might smell like this. I don't like this. However, other people love this, rave about this, and get beautiful florals out of it. It does remind me of, it's like a synthetic jungle. That's a beautiful name for this fragrance, even though another fragrance is named that. This is a no. I don't know why I've kept this. Well, I just told you I've kept this because it's hard to find, but I need for this to go to a new home. Do you like this? If you like this, let me know in the comments. Say Eden is my jam in the comments. Another iconic, iconic 80s scent <laughs> that reminds me of times I used to douse myself in fragrance and think that I was just all of that. All of that, y'all. Giorgio Beverly Hills. This is bombastic. This is so loud and in your face huge white floral also has some yellow florals also has some fruit also has some woodiness also has some moss in it if i'm not mistaken and oak moss god this is loud this is a super loud fragrance for the time being this makes me happy and i i don't know that i'd wear this but this is definitely one of those fragrances that i keep for nostalgia because it is a huge fragrance so much presence i'm going to put it back behind me for now knowing that it may need to go though, because I'm unlikely to wear this. Like I'd probably wear Chantilly before I wear this because it is so loud and proud and in your face <laughs> and uh, just even too much for me. I have this fragrance and it just says cafe. And I think it is uh, under the Coffin Lux umbrella. I can't remember what I did with the box and I can't remember what this is supposed to be. I haven't even smelled this in a long time. It's Ambery spicy. I get some oak moss in this also, I think. <laughs> I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be. So this is going out the door. I wore the heck out of this next fragrance and I repurchased this bottle. Honestly, I think this is Lauren by Ralph Lauren. I think I had COVID when I originally repurchased this bottle because I remember thinking it doesn't smell like I remember. I've worn it a few times since then. And it does actually give me a nostalgic vibe and a memory of the fragrance that I used to wear. This has some very sort of stark florals in it, like lilac and lily of the valley. Carnation again, imagine that. Green notes, it's a little woody, so it's aro also aromatic. It's an interesting fragrance. I don't know that I'm ready to let this go. Not one that I think I would wear very often, uh, but it's definitely an interesting scent that I am not ready to get rid of just yet. So let's put it up here with the the ones that are going to stay and I may come back to it. A fragrance that I used to love and I'm glad to have a bottle of this. It's also by Ralph Lauren and this is Safari. This reminds me of the song Africa by Toto, probably because of the name and associating it with East Africa. The song talks about rising over the Serengeti. So anyway, <laughs> this fragrance is very green. It reminds me a lot of vetiver, the note of vetiver, even though I don't think there's vetiver in here. And it has this very dry, dusty, hay-like feeling to it, along with the greenness. Like if I imagine being on safari, on reservation, which I have done, and, and thinking about the dust kicking up behind the safari vehicle, like the Land Rover that you're in, and you're also going over grassy plains, but there's, there's dust from the, the dry earth kicking up. It gives me like that mental image in my mind. There's something really different nostalgic and interesting about this and i do enjoy the bottle there's the there's the ralph lauren symbol on the front i've been showing you all the back the whole time so i think this is staying let's put it up here for now this one i know i am not going to keep i've not gotten along with it it's been a tough wear i got it because i know that it's a classic and i was in this mode a few years back of wanting to collect a lot of classic fragrances they're blue from guerlain this is an eau de parfum concentration this is i think that stands for the blue hour 
or like being melancholy or something like that, the hour of sadness, the hour of bluteness. So I just don't get along with this fragrance. It's a little powdery. It definitely has a blue feeling in it because it has some of those cold florals that are not warm by definition if they're cold florals, Veronica. But yeah, this is just, it's hard to describe this fragrance. I don't get down with it. I'm not, I just don't understand why people enjoy this. So I'm definitely going to give this to a new home. So a fragrance that I did wear back in the day was really, really grown up back when. I don't know if I had the Eau de Parfum or the Eau de Toilette concentration. This is 24 Faubourg. Faubourg. I always have a hard time saying that. 24 Faubourg. Faubourg from Hermes. So I remember smelling this back in the day. We got a bottle of it and it was a, a really sort of potent fragrance for me at that time in my, my earlier youthful years. And so this is an Eau de Parfum concentration here. It's heavy on the florals, super heavy on the florals and some citrus, white florals, citrus and amber is what comes up for me most. A little bit of woodiness. It is an incredibly sophisticated fragrance. I don't know if this is one that I would pull for often, very sort of special occasion, but I have other special occasion fragrances that I'm more interested in. So I regret to say that although this is a gorgeous fragrance, I think I may put this one up for sale. So I'm gonna put it aside in the no pile right now. And then I've talked about <laughs> having trouble with this fragrance. This is the reformulation of opium, just opium, not black opium, not any of the other opium flankers, just opium. My mom had the original flacon with the uh, dabber top. And boy, was that a strong, spicy, maybe even smoky fragrance. I have to say, I'm still not feeling <laughs> this fragrance, this reformulation. It's not bad. It is spicy. It's resinous. I get patchouli a lot of amber, gives me a little bit of Shalimar vibes, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. I have to say, I would likely not reach for this. I appreciate it. I see what it's getting at. I see how it is a reminder of the original, but I would reach for other spicy ambers before this fragrance here. So I think I'm going to pass this one along too, although I do think it's beautiful and I think the bottle is still quite nice. I have four left, but I only have, I think, two or three slots up there if I'm going to get to 23. So either something's got to come off of that shelf <laughs> or these can't make it. And I still have four off screen that were maybes that we need to revisit. So we have here the Cocos, Coco Eau de Parfum and Coco Eau de Toilette. So I think that this is an easy decision and it may be one that I regret, but Coco Eau de Parfum is not enjoyed in this house. I like it. I think it's a beautiful amber spicy very mature elegant special occasion kind of fragrance however my husband does not enjoy this on me to the point that it makes me uncomfortable to wear it coco eau de toilette is a little bit brighter a tiny bit fresher with the spices and all of that than this one and a little bit more wearable although i like the classic coco chanel i'm sorry coco bottle better yeah coco chanel coco chanel I do, I do like this bottle better. So anyway, but this one smells more wearable. So I'm going to let this one go and keep this one. Then we're down to like a battle royale here. <laughs> Although it's not really a battle because I'm pretty sure I know what I'm going to do. Uh, and I don't know that I'll choose between either one of these, but I have Coco Chanel number no. five, the queen of aldehyde fragrances. And I have the Shalimar Eau de Parfum. I don't know you all, there's just something about number five that brings back good memories. I will always associate this with elegance and class and ladies being really put together to go out to special occasions. That's what this uh, fragrance signifies for me. As you can see, I've worn a lot of it. I used to wear this to work. It's just classic. It's a classic clean fragrance with some woody aspects. There's just something smooth about this fragrance and it's staying. I, I don't understand why people don't like this, but to each their own and that's the beauty of fragrance, right? There's something out there for everyone and one man's trash is another man's treasure. This to me is a treasure. So this one is tough. My mom wore number five, she wore Coco, she wore Opium, she wore Oscar de la Renta, uh, Paloma Picasso and Shalimar which is another one that came in a dabber bottle. I remember this clearly. This fragrance, I have to say, is a tough one for me. It's citrus and it's amber and vanilla. And then as it dries down, it has like this animalic touch that can be a little bit much. You have to really be in the mood to wear Shalimar, the original. It is a beauty. This bottle is just divine. The whole sort of vibe of this is beautiful. There's such a long history with the fragrance. 
but I have to admit, this isn't one that I would reach for. So I'm going to put it in the no pile, although it will likely make its way back onto my shelf just because for some reason I can't let go of it, if I'm being totally honest. Okay, we're near the end of this very long video, and all I have left are the ones that were maybes. There are four of them, and I think I'm pretty clear on what's going to happen here. Beyond Paradise, if I find the original bottle, I may pick it up because the fragrance in here is lovely. This bottle is so uninspiring. The fragrance is so good though, but I'm going to say no to this, probably regretfully because it's nice. I'm going to say no to Bijan Nude. It's time for it to have a new home. It's lovely. I think someone will really enjoy wearing this fragrance and having, getting their hands on this bottle. I just realized I probably have another five or six fragrances that I could have put in this video, but we're just going to pause here, you all. <laughs> Vol de Nuit, I, I'm going to go ahead and sell. This is gorgeous, but I'm not going to reach for it really pretty fragrance. The one that I am going to keep both for nostalgic reasons and because I think I would like to wear it again, maybe on a fall night, is Paloma Picasso. Wow, we made it to the end of this insanely long video. I really, really, really want to hear your thoughts on this video. Am I crazy for letting go of 20 something of these fragrances? Uh, and are there any that you would have kept? So here are the final 20 something behind me. Boop, let me put this one up here. So there, here are the, let me do my Vanna White act. Here are the final 20 something, 23, 24, that get to stay on the fragrance shelves. And I think what I'm going to do is actually integrate them into my regular shelves so that they're not relegated up to some shelf that's hard to reach where I won't get to them so I can actually wear these. And that means that some other fragrances need to go to make room. It's like the constant curation. It just is what it is when you have a fragrance channel and a large collection. Mwah. Love you guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you. See you in the next video. Take care.